Hello, this is Lawrence Romanowski from the Distinctive Collection in Calgary, Canada, and uh, it's turning uh, into spring here, uh, which means everybody's going to start thinking about their sports cars. Uh, anyway, so welcome to our showroom, and we have the usual selection of um, late model sports and luxury cars, as well as spikers, which are these uh, very interesting looking Dutch cars. And um, the white car we've got here is the new Spiker Aileron. So this, this isn't on sale yet. This car is a uh, pre-production car uh, and uh, it, uh, it was uh, trucked here so we could include it in the auto show which is just finished. And uh, we got a truck coming today to collect it and presumably take it to the next uh, auto show somewhere. So a little bit about uh, Spiker who um, many people of course haven't heard of. It's a boutique uh, supercar maker sort of in the in the mold of a, of a Koenigsegg or, uh, or, uh, or what have you. Um, but Spiker is actually probably one of the more, more, more successful of them. And so started with uh, Victor Mueller and he was a Dutch businessman, successful Dutch businessman, trained as a lawyer. And he found a concept car, I think, in one of the auto shows that a Dutch guy did. And, and it looked like this. It was a C8. And, uh, and then he thought, he liked it so much that he thought, well, why don't we build it? And so he um, got together some money and, uh, you know, really did every boy's dream and made his own sports car and uh, even took it to Le Mans. And uh, I think the highlight of that program was coming fifth uh, in, uh, in uh, 2008, uh, which is a terrific achievement for, um, <clears throat> for a small manufacturer. It's not easy to finish Le Mans. Um, you, have to, you have to be within a certain percentage of the race leaders and to get a car to go a production based car to finish the 24 hours is a major achievement. I mean, most supercars that you uh, that you'd uh, you know could buy today they last about 45 minutes before they'd be reduced to a <coughs> steaming, burning heap after 70 percent of the lap being full throttle. Anyway, so they came out with a C8 Spider originally with a BMW V8 engine and then later with the Audi powertrain. And uh, this is a great car. Great track car. It's light. It's stiff. It's loud. You you hear everything. You feel everything. There's no vibration dampening. No sound deadening. No fender liners. You hear every pebble, you know, in the wheel arches. It's great fun. It uh, it's not very practical. Um, you know, it barely has a top, and uh, it has you know it doesn't have. This actually this one has an MP3 player uh, or iPod connector, but. Uh, you know, it doesn't have stereo, it doesn't have a nav, it doesn't have power steering, it doesn't have power brakes, it doesn't have anything. I mean, there's gorgeous detailing, it's lots of fun, but, uh, and it only comes in, an, in a standard transmission. So they decided, so Spiker decided, and Victor decided to come out with a car that they could sell to, you know, different markets. Um, you know, try selling a manual transmission car into China. Uh, it doesn't work too well. Um, <laughs> and even in the States, where it's so built up and everybody's on the freeway, there was <clears throat> great call for an automatic transmission car and something with, you know, at least some concessions to creature comfort. And so Victor himself penned this car. He then gave it to a Photoshop artist, if you can believe it, who uh, took all of the lines and, uh, and adapted it to, to three dimension. Then it went into CAD CAM and then they, then they built the car. Amazing story of a guy who just, uh, uh, you know, built his own car from scratch. And so it still uses the same Audi 4.2 liter V8 engine uh, and it's a, it's a ZF a six speed uh, transmission, you know, mated to the, mated to the V8 engine. The, the car is an aluminum monocoque, uh, very, very, very stiff. I, mean, I don't, can't recall exactly what the torsional rigidity is and so many newton meters per degree, but it's extremely high. So it's a great chassis. Um, Lotus actually, we've got some Lotuses in the showroom, had uh, a lot to do with it. And it even has a, a variation of the Lotus Evora suspension, which if you know the Lotuses, you know that the Evora is one of the best handling cars out there right now. So where, the, where this C8 Spiker is a lot like the Elise or Exige, just sort of beefed up a, a lot with V8 power and, 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 uh, and uh, a little bit, uh, <clears throat> a little bit uh, wider and lower and so on. The, uh, the aileron actually, there's quite a bit of uh, Lotus, ex Lotus uh, Evora in it. Um, again, but the Lotus would use the 
the Toyota-based uh, six-cylinder engine, and this would this would use the uh, the Audi V8. Uh, of course, you know the 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 design of the Spiker and the detailing is, is completely unique and nothing like the Lotus. But in terms of what it actually is, in terms of a car and the chassis and the suspension, it's actually pretty close. Um, this car was built in Holland, um, but the um, they're constructed in Holland, but the panels come from uh, from the UK in the industrial Midlands, Midlands, a company called CPP. And the production for all these cars now is being transferred to, uh, to CPP. And uh, also, one of the original partners in Spiker was this Russian billionaire guy, and uh, and then and he is a, a, an owner of CPP, and he has agreed to buy the Spiker uh, rights to make the car from Spiker Cars NV in Holland, which owns Saab. Because what happened during the whole process of these cars is that with the um, with the uh, economic turmoil in uh, 2008, uh, you know, a lot of the, the big manufacturers wanted to spin off their luxury brands, with the, which they had purchased for huge money uh, not that long ago. GM wanted to, to sell Spiker, and of course Land Rover and Ford went to uh, Tata, and uh, Volvo went to the, uh, the Chinese. Anyway, so Koenigsegg, which is a, a Swedish car supercar maker, they make like a thousand horsepower mid-engine V8 to uh, 240 mile an hour car. They took a run at Saab, and uh, and and I guess the story goes that uh, Victor was like incredulous and it's like, well, how, you know, how are they going to make that work? Uh, and uh, and and then and then it just fell apart at the last minute for whatever reason. And but but by doing so or, or having having Koenigsegg take a run at them, I think it opened the door for Spiker to do that, and Victor actually pulled it off. Um, he's, he's actually. You know, quite, uh, yeah, a very, a very astute and competent businessman. Um, also, a terrific car fan, has 25 classic cars, uh, takes his son in the Melia Melia every year and has done for many years and has wooden boats and the whole bit. So he's, he really is a man of exquisite uh, taste in, in mechanical objects for sure. Okay, so that leaves the, the aileron, which is basically his, his car, his pet project. And the production transferred to CPP in England uh, for um, for what is a new spiker that is just going to appeal to a lot more people than the really raw and uh, and really specific, um, basically a track car, solo two car, which is the which is the C8. Uh, so um, okay, so we've got the aluminum monocoque. We have an all aluminum body panels. We've got uh, the Audi 4.2 liter 400 horsepower engine. The weight is just a bit over 3,000 pounds. And so that gives zero to 100 kilometers an hour in four and a half seconds and 300 kilometers an hour top speed. So very, very decent specification. Interior is typical Spiker, which is just absolutely over the top, um, but very, very beautifully constructed. I mean, this, uh, the, uh, the quilted Recaro sports seats and the turned aluminum dash. Of course, you know, most cars pre-war, the old Bentleys and so on, the old Astons, they would have turned aluminum dash, which is just aluminum with then a wire brush on it and just gives a design. Even the old aircraft as well. Um, anything that looks like, well, there's no part sharing with Spikers. I mean, they make every single part. It's machined from solid or machined from billet or what have you. So. Um, it's uh, the, there's a terrific um, tactile feel. Um, getting in it is um, ah, reasonably easy actually, and uh, you can see the uh, gauges here. And like I said, there's beautiful uh, aircraft-inspired uh, rocker switches. Um, about the air about the aircraft uh, um, th uh, styling themes, Spiker was a Dutch company in the early part of the century. They made cars and then later made planes and then wound up going out of business in the 1920s. And so Victor resurrected the Spiker name, um, asked the family if it was uh, if they had their blessing or not. He didn't need to because it was more than 75 years old, but the family gave the blessing to, uh, to uh, reuse the Spiker name. And so the cars then have a aircraft motif. So the, the, first, the first car, the, um, the uh, C8, has, has propeller motifs in it. 
And then, of course, this car is a later car, and so it has jet turbine motifs. Uh, so even on the air vents and uh, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, overhead uh, switches. Um, you know how you start the car, you get an aircraft style um, safety switch, turn on the ignition, and then hit the starter button to start it. All very dramatic and uh, super cool. Um, so this car has uh, the navigation system and it will all pop up on that screen there. Um, this, this thing here uh, is, the, uh, is a circular controller uh, for the audio and for the uh, iDrive and so on. Um, everybody asks lots of questions about the, uh, the gear lever in this car and uh, this piece here is just uh, a structural and, and it just acts as a support for the uh, linkage for the gear shift which then just pivots on that and in this case it's just an automatic transmission where you press the solenoid down and uh, put it put it into um, put it into gear and then you can see that the uh, the gear is light up there um, and so it has uh, you know power windows and it's got a iPod connector and it's got a fancy s a stereo um, the stereo comes from Karma which is a very very high-end Dutch company so every car of course you need to have a, a watch association and you need to have a stereo you know high-end stereo association it's just the way it is um, uh, so you know you've got a car that's still light and stiff um, but will also sort of happily uh, sit in traffic um, the, um, there's glass panels on the roof so even though it's a pretty low car and the, uh, the cowl is uh, quite high and the windshield's almost kind of like a letterbox. Uh, it does have a nice sense of space. And looking behind you, you get a nice view of the engine, uh, a la Fer Ferrari, and then a couple of nice roll bars. Um, it, I, I mean, I don't know if it comes across in the videos, but it's a beautiful, beautiful interior. I mean, it's, it's really, really quite extraordinary. Um, I'm sure other cars are more ergonomic, but, uh, you know, this has, uh, you know, more pleasure because each time you hit the defrost vent, you know, it's a sense of occasion to it. Anyway, it's lovely. And so I guess what you ask with a with a spiker is, well, what is it exactly? Um, <laughs> is it a supercar, you know, made for outright performance, like a like a Koenigsegg or a, 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 a Pagani Zonda? Well, not really, because, you know, it's not really designed just for performance. And uh, it, uh, so it's kind of it's kind of hard to, to tell you exactly you know what it is. Only the best thing I can probably say is it's it's Dutch, <laughs> and, and, and leave it at uh, leave it at that. So it's uh, it's exquisitely styled. It's uh, fast, fast. It handles well. We had it on the racetrack out in uh, in uh, Atlanta, and uh, you know it's 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 race derived suspension and so on. So it handles well. But I think, you, I think you buy a Spiker because you have five cars and, you know, every second car is a 458 or an Italia and um, the Porsches are too generic. And uh, you, buy, you buy a Spiker not to, you know, try to, you know, win a race or, uh, or uh, have bragging rights for the most powerful car, etc. You, you buy a Spiker just because it's cool. And, uh, and, and and that's that's enough. So uh, terrific quality, sounds good, beautiful, beautifully sculpted interior. It's around a quarter of a million dollars Canadian, well, and US, because right now the uh, exchange is the same. But it's it's a unique a unique buy in this segment of the market, and uh, and I think we should all be happy that it's here because you know there's so many great cars. You know you can look at you know beautiful. Audis or gorgeous uh, Ferraris, etc., or Astons or Bentleys. I mean, in that in that price range, there's all kinds of choices. But the the Spiker is the Spiker is the unique one and uh, easy to service and, like I said, a quality automobile. So um, that uh, that's what I think about it. And uh, thanks for viewing Lawrence Romanowski, Distinctive Collection in Calgary, Canada. Uh, these cars will enter production in, uh, in mid-2011. Uh, they will be followed by uh, a Spider version of it. And then later, uh, the, the wildest looking SUV you've just ever seen. All right, thanks a lot, and uh, thanks for viewing. Bye.